and welcome back to my channel we're going to have a quick look at how the heath kit c-3 brackets u if you're in england measures resistors and capacitors so let's get at it Right, here we are looking at the kind of my version of the circuit. The Heathkit C3 measurement is based on the Wheatstone bridge. The EM35 Magic Eye performs the balance bridge indication. When the bridge is balanced, there is no voltage potential between the earth and the grid of the EM34. So this means that the eye will be fully open. The eye will close as the bridge moves away in either direction from the null point. Here, I've just broken down the circuit to form the Wheatstone bridge. Normally in the Wheatstone bridge diagram, they have the, the impedances at diagonals to make up a sort of diamondy shape. But uh, I couldn't find a way on KiCad or KiCad of putting resistors on the drawing at 45 degrees. <laughs> so I gave up. So this is effectively what it effectively looks like. It's got an AC supply. And so as the measurements are in AC, technically we're measuring impedances and not resistances. But the resistor under test on all the resistors in here effectively will have some form of capacitance or inductive parts but at 50 ohms the inductance from the leads and, capacit and capacitances from across the leads and things like that are going to be so negligible we won't even think about them you know if it was a if it was a not a wire round resistor then it'll have inductance and it will affect the readings slightly but a normal resistor, if you measure the impedance of it, it will be something like R plus J0. All the, all the impedance will be on the resistance side and there'll be no value assigned to the imaginary side. So no phase shift, basically, that's all it's saying. So if we look closely, the 90K is shorted out by this switch and this is shorted out for all the resistance ranges, or well, the two resistance ranges, it's bypassed by the switch. So the bridge will said to be in balance or nulled when the ratio of RR and RT is equal to the ratio of RX and RY. So if the dial is set to the mid position on the first resistance range, the wiper of the pot, this one down here, that's the wiper going backwards and forwards for on these two, effectively these two arms of the bridge, will be set centre. So it will have 5k this side and 5k that side. So effectively a 50% ratio. Now on the R value, on the low range, the reference impedance or the reference resistor is 2k. So we know to balance the bridge, the ratio of here has got to be the same as the ratio there. And so if that's 50-50, then we have to have 50-50 here. So if it's 2k this side, then R1 is 2k. And that will balance the bridge and it will null out. Just so that we know, if I whiz that out of the way, bring that in, expand it up, we'll see there's the midpoint and it's at 2k. So that just shows how they've done it. Quite simple, really. So, and for the, let's go back to there, for the times 100 range, quite simple. We've just changed for this one, the R reference. We changed that to 200k and so to make it balance instead of being 2k here again it needs to be 200k notice that this doesn't change at all it's always a 10k resistor with a wiper going from one end to the other and so it's always the ratio of where that wiper is to the ratio of these components and that's what it is for the resistance range so hope you got that and then we'll move on to the capacitance range which is virtually the same because we will be considering impedances. Right, here we can see the bridge when it switched into the capacitor measuring mode. And one thing you may notice straight away is the capacitor under test and the capacitor reference have swapped on the resistance range. The reference was over here and the test, the test resistor was here. But for capacitance, it's swapped. And the reason for that is the impedance of the capacitor, as it gets smaller in value, the impedance rises at 50 hertz, it increases. And so this meter, or the, the dial resistor, effectively has to operate in the opposite direction. 
in resistance as the test resistor gets smaller then the corresponding arm of the dial resistor has to get smaller but for capacitors as the capacitor gets smaller the resistance on that arm has to increase along with the, the impedance of the capacitor so again we've got the 10k pot and to balance the bridge the ratio of the capacitor under test and its reference capacitor I've got to equal the ratio of the arms of the wiper so if we compare the state where it's null the easiest the easiest place to look will be 50% of the travel when CT and CR are equal their ratio will be 50% which when infers that to have the ratio of 50% here the wiper must be in the mid position. Now, if we look at the circuit, and I'll just move over the way to that, because there's a comment on it. Oops. See ref impedance at 50 Hertz. On the lowest range, it's 200 puff, and that's like 15.9 megs. The next range up is 200 nanofarads. That's 195K. The two microfarad drops to 1K59. The second range is still 2K, but uh, there's a trick they do with the R90, and uh, that comes into play for that range. So if we move it back over. Right, so we've got virtually this, you know, exactly the same setup, only now we've got this capacitor, and we've seen just seen that there are, it's either a 200 puff, 200 nanofarad, two microfarads. Get in the thing here, they all begin with two. The same way as the resistor was a 2K or 200K. And as you saw on the dial, the two is dead, cent dead vertical. It's the center of the dial's range. If we looked at the front of the dial, we will see the values above, 200 puff, 200 nanofarad, 2 microfarad, except for the extended range, and that's when you're doing the 20 uh, microfarads and above, it shifts. So. So if we have a quick look at the calculations based on the following to measure a 200 nanofarad capacitor. So what do we know for the range that includes the 200 nanofarad range within the instrument? This range gives us a 200 nanofarad reference capacitor. And for the UK, we can assume the test frequency is 50 Hertz. So as worked out previously, the impedance of the 200 nanofarad capacitor is 15.915 kilo ohms. And so if we have the same one again on the uh, test side, we have two values the same. And therefore, if you work out the ratio, it will be 50% or point, point 0.5. If we come down here and we go, what's point 0.5 of 10K? Well, it's 5K and 5K again. It's smack bang in the middle. And so a 200 nanofarad capacitor will balance or null dead vertical, or that's what it should do. If everything's going to plan now what happens on the extended range which is above the 20 microfarad to a thousand microfarad range is that arm becomes active the switch is open for that range and so the 90k is switched in so now we have a total impedance across here of 100k and that means we've effectively multiplied the ratio this arm is now you know the pot can go from 100k this side to 10k on that side if you're looking at that way here that's not a good way of describing it is it this effectively shifts some impedance into here because we are now looking at a resistor that's like 10 times bigger and so we've added sort of almost like 10 times the resistance on this arm. And so now it will balance with a, res of a capacitor under test that, you know, is 10 times this value. And so the range is distorted, but it's a neat way of giving you the 20 to 1000 microfarads. And I think if we go back and we look, you'll see that the extended range is here and if you want to work it out if you work out the impedance for about a 37 
microfarad capacitor, then this arm will be vertical about there. Sorry, this arm will be vertical about here. There's a little quiz for you. Calculate the impedance of a 37 microfarad capacitor and work out how it will affect the position of that pot. It's not difficult, quite fun. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Oh, no, there's one more thing. Come back to here. Right, one more thing is, why do they use an AC signal for measuring the resistance? So they're measuring it as an impedance rather than a DC, or as a resistance if it was, if it was DC. Well, one of the reasons is it saves them having to switch that capacitor out. But the other reason is, if I now swing it back over to here and we look at this bit, you see that it says, you know, for the angle to be fully open on the grid, you get naught volts. To close the angle and close the eye, for this one you need minus 4.2 volts and for this one you need minus 12 volts to close it. Well, what happens if it goes positive? It will try and open wider. So going positive makes no indication. And of course, if we go back to the resistance range again, one over again, we right, we go to there. If this was a DC signal, and ignoring the capacitor, if that was five uh, five k, that was five k, and we're balanced in the middle, so we got five k in this arm, five k in that arm. If we move to one side, we will get a positive potential across the meter, and if we go the other way, we will get a negative potential across the, the meter. And so the meter would only display when it was off to one side. It would be like you could have it fully closed and as you come towards the center point, it would open right up and then it would stay open after that point. But as it's AC and it's capacitively coupled, the meter is kind of rectifying it itself. And so, it, you know, it doesn't care if the phase has changed slightly as it goes between the null, as long as there's an AC signal, 50% of that signal will be negative. And so effectively the eye will be opening and closing at 50 hertz, but you won't see it. So as far as you're concerned, it will be whatever, can, whatever the, the magnitude of the voltage is. So that's sort of a crafty trick they've used, I suppose, to cut down on components. I just thought that was interesting and I thought I'd tell you. Well, if you like what you've seen so far, you know, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button, click on the notification button so you get more of my videos when I produce them. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one.